Hey guys, it's Cynthia. Welcome back to my channel. So today I want to be sharing with you guys some of my top sunscreen recommendations as well as provide sort of like a 101 on the different types of sunscreens that are out there and what kind of protection you should be looking for depending on your skin type. Feel free to skip to later in the video where I talk more about the specific sunscreen recommendations, but first I'm going to be going into the two different types of rays that the sun emits and then the types of sunscreens that are available to protect against them. So the different types of rays that the sun will emit are UVA rays and UVB rays. UVA rays are the long range rays that the sun will emit and they're primarily responsible for causing the signs of aging on your skin. UVB rays, however, are the short wave rays that are primarily responsible for causing burns. Both these types of rays, however, are harmful for your skin and will contribute to development of skin cancer. So you want to make sure you're finding sunscreen that is broad spectrum and protects against both the UVA and UVB rays. So you might also see on a lot of sunscreen labels that there's also PA++ or however many number pluses there are afterwards. And that's basically specific to UVA rays and it refers to the amount of time that it takes for the skin to tan. So basically the more pluses there are after the PA label, it means the more time it takes for the skin to darken. The two different types of sunscreen that are available are physical and chemical sunscreens. Physical sunscreens are just as the name would suggest, think of it as like a literal sunblock, um, and it basically acts as like a protective barrier on your skin to um, keep out all the UVA and UVB rays. It physically reflects and sort of like bounces away the sunlight from your skin and the main ingredients are typically zinc oxide or titanium oxide. I would say the biggest con to physical sunscreens are the fact that they do typically leave a white cast on the skin due to that zinc ingredient. However, they do start working immediately upon application and they're very suitable for acne prone skin or sensitive skin. Chemical sunscreens on the other hand work by absorbing that UV light so it can't penetrate your skin. However, there is a higher risk of chemical sunscreens causing allergic reactions or just irritation to sensitive skin. These typically don't leave any white cast, which is nice. However, you wanna make sure you're applying your chemical sunscreen 20 to 30 minutes in advance at least, just to make sure that it's working properly before you go outside or get any sun exposure. So that was just a quick overview on the different types of sunscreens that are out there and the different rays and what we're trying to avoid. But now I wanna go ahead and share with you guys some of my favorite sunscreens that I've used in the past. So the criteria that I typically have when I'm choosing a sunscreen is that it needs to be lightweight, protect against both UVA and UVA, UVB rays, is non-greasy, absorbs quickly, leaves no white cast, and ideally is compatible with makeup. So the first sunscreen I want to talk about is the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. So this has SPF 40 protection against both UVA and UVB rays, and you can purchase it from Sephora for about $34. I think its biggest selling point is, as its name would suggest, it's completely transparent and it actually works really well as a makeup primer. The texture of the sunscreen itself is sort of reminiscent of like a silicone texture, and it actually reminded me a lot of like Smashbox Photo Finish Primer, if you know what that feels like. So it's very smooth and blends out really well. I would say it's like pretty much sweat slash water resistant given the fact that I wore this pretty much every single day when I was living in Austin for the summer when it was like extremely hot every single day and I was always walking outside. And in my opinion, this sunscreen is probably the most compatible with makeup because of that silicone texture. I know Supergoop has been expanding their product lines recently and I've seen they've come out with a glow screen which kind of has some more shimmery pigments to it and also a matte screen. So if you're not into like the super dewy look, it provides more of a matte finish. So I really enjoy this sunscreen. I would definitely recommend it if you're typically wearing a full face of makeup. My one qualm is really just the fact that it's SPF 40 versus SPF 50, which is the minimum that I usually like to have for my sunscreens. But since it works so well, in like every other aspect, I kind of just let it go. So this one is a chemical formula and it's one of the more expensive ones out of my sunscreens I'm gonna be showing you guys, but I do think it's a really great investment and I would definitely recommend looking into it or giving it a try at Sephora when you get a chance. So the next sunscreen that I wanna talk about is from CanMake and it's their Mermaid Skin UV Gel. So I'm a really huge fan of this sunscreen. It's a hybrid of both chemical and physical sunscreen ingredients and it works really well. This one doesn't come out fully transparent, but once you blend it in, it definitely it shows up clear on the skin. I've also read a lot of reviews checking to see if it had a white cast for people who had skin darker than mine and it seems like it definitely does not leave any sort of white tint on your face. The texture of the sunscreen is definitely more watery which is very typical of a lot of Asian sunscreens especially the ones that I'll show later on but 
because of that it means it's really lightweight on the skin and absorbs very well this one's spf 50 which is great and even though it's a japanese brand i checked and it's available on amazon for about 11 dollars, which i think is a really great deal i actually got mine when i was traveling over the summer in hong kong but i love it so much and would definitely recommend it one thing to note though is that i believe there are two versions a clear version and then a white version and the white one as the name would suggest leaves more of like a lighter tint on the skin so definitely try to avoid that if you do not want that kind of effect i believe that version is more sort of catered to the asian population that might want more of like a brighter tint on the face so the next sunscreen that i want to talk about is from shiseido and it's their senka sunscreen and this one is also spf 50 and super lightweight i would say this sunscreen is a little bit more moisturizing than some of the other chemical sunscreens that i've tried but i really like it for that reason because as someone who even has like more oily skin it still feels really nice on the face and it doesn't leave me looking greasy if anything i would say it's just a little more dewy shiseido is another japanese brand but this one is also readily available on amazon and you can even get like a two pack for less than 20 bucks which i think is a really great deal the next sunscreen that i want to share with you guys is from misha which i believe is a korean brand and it's their essence sun milk again this one is spf 50 and has a chemical formulation it also has a really nice watery lotion texture so again it'll absorb really well into the skin very quickly and it feels super lightweight this one retails for about 15 dollars usd and it was a little bit harder to find on amazon but if you're willing to purchase from sites that carry more asian brands such as yes style or jolce or whatever then that would be a great place to purchase it because it really is a great sunscreen another sunscreen that i've really enjoyed is actually from a fellow youtuber if you know leah Yu, this is from her brand crave beauty and it's their beach shield sunscreen so this is also spf 50 and it's honestly fantastic the texture of this sunscreen is actually very similar to the misha one that i just mentioned where it has more of like a watery lotion texture one thing that i really do like about this one is the fact that it has a lot of antioxidants which are great for the skin so not only does it offer protection but it also offers a lot of skin improving ingredients as well i would say the only downside is it might be a little bit harder to get a hold of it's 20 dollars for the full size and you can purchase it straight from the crave beauty website or if you're in korea but i believe those are the only places that you can order it from so the next sunscreen that i want to talk about is the biore uv aqua rich watery essence sunscreen this one seems to be pretty iconic in asia i remember when i was in hong kong japan and just like pretty much everywhere um, I was able to find this in a lot of convenience stores, uh, beauty stores, pretty much everywhere and it seems to be a cult favorite in Asia. So as the watery essence name suggests, it has a really nice watery texture to it and it absorbs very quickly in the skin. However, one of the more controversial things about this sunscreen is just the fact that it does seem to have a higher alcohol content compared to a lot of other sunscreens. I found that this doesn't bother my skin and it helps to have the sunscreen absorb faster. So I've still enjoyed this. It blends in really well, but I would say if you're going to be wearing a full face of makeup on top, you might want to use a different sunscreen just because I've noticed Notice, it does kind of tend to pill once I put more layers on top of it. This retails for about $10 or less depending on what site you're purchasing from, but I would still definitely recommend you check it out and see if it works for your skin. So the last sunscreen that I want to share with you guys is from Shiseido and it's their ultimate sun protection cream and it's part of their wet force line. So I don't use this one super frequently just because it has a super high zinc content and while that's really good for protecting against the sun, I found that it does tend to leave more of a noticeable white cast so definitely keep that in mind if you try it out. However, I want to include this one because it is by far one of the more sweat proof water resistant sunscreens that I've used. It still absorbs into the face super quickly which is really nice and it definitely won't be coming off if you get very sweaty. I would say it is a little bit less moisturizing than some of the other sunscreens that I talked about but with the right amount of blending and if you have a good moisturizer on underneath I think you should be fine. Another thing to keep in mind is that because it is a very water resistant sunscreen it might be a little bit harder to remove at the end of the day so you'll definitely want to double cleanse in order to fully get it off. I have a travel size of it that I received in some sort of Sephora gift bundle thing in the past but I believe it retails for about $40 online for the full size but with most of these sunscreens actually a little bit does go a long way and I'll say it again but I really do think that having a good sunscreen is worth investing in. Alright guys so I know that was a lot of content but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a little bit more about the ins and outs of sunscreen and have a better idea of what sunscreen you might want to purchase for this summer. If you've actually used any of the sunscreens that I've talked about let me know in the comments down below and if you have any additional questions feel free to leave them down there as well and I'll do my best to answer. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!